Okay, so this one actually shows a little better an echo. You don't, see, you probably don't see it very well, but it's right there. Um, just because I've looked at a lot of records, my eye gets pulled to this thing, <laughs> particularly when I filter it. So it's you got some stuff going on here, and there's definitely a shallow echo here at around 17 feet again. Okay. Now this may be a case. One thing that can happen on drilled shafts as you go through different layers and soil is you can have a drill shaft and as you go through a, a layer of the soil, if this is softer and this is harder, mm -hmm. you can have it where it, the, the, the actual drill rig is this diameter. But as it's drilling through the softer soil, you get this, you know, caving. Yes. And right. so it, it makes a larger diameter. And once you hit that hard layer, the diameter decreases. Right. And you can get a, it's usually a small neck. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of thing that this would be likely to be, would be a, a small. And the only way to really know that is you ask the people on site, hey, is there a layer or something? Do you guys hit something at 17 feet that caused a diameter, you know, where it went to a stiffer layer? Right. And if that's the case, then that's probably normal. And, and that would happen, you know, like, up, up there will you heat the limestone. Yeah, yeah, before, before right. you hit, right, if, if you're going through the limestone or, it can even happen though if you go from like a sand layer to a clay layer. Okay. You know, that kind of thing. The sand layer is kind of soft if it collapse or loose fill into right. a, the clay layer might hold the diameter better. Something that's stiffer. And, so the actual bottom echo is going to be right out here, out here and that's 51 feet. Okay. So that's a nice little bottom echo. You can see it better if I amplify. So that's, this is one where the amplification really brings that out. Notice that? Mm -hmm. You know, by hitting that uh, plus minus. So with no amplification, it's there, but with a little bit of amplification versus depth, it really comes in. Although, you know, that, that I um, get a little too much amplification. So let's turn that down. <laughs> so, again, so it's a really nice, clear echo versus depth. And so 51 feet, there's a nice bottom echo. The second echo is going to be way out here somewhere, and it's not very clear because this just isn't going to be much energy out there. Okay. But this is a pretty decent, this is kind of a normal, you get, these are probably real little tiny variations in the shaft diameter, mm -hmm. these other little things, but this is going to be the bottom. This nice clear echo down here. So usually if you see, if, if you don't have any variation in your pile or your diameter, it will be just be yeah, close to it yeah. will be close to flat. Close, okay. close to flat. Yeah, okay. this will be. A, and there's some examples. The one I showed you in the the one that's in the um, sample data set, uh, the, the analysis document. Mm -hmm. yeah, that one shows it really damps out pretty flat. Yes, yeah, and then, it, early, then boom. Yeah. yeah, you can flatten it a little bit by it, having some additional filtering, but. You know, at some point it um, it really isn't flattening so much; it's just kind of rounding off. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's uh, and, it, and the filtering doesn't really change the depth. It's still whoops. Oh, I have an extra echo in there. Let me uh, an extra pick here and here. So it's still 51 feet, but it smooths it out. Now you can really see that bottom echo. Right. You know, by by playing with the filtering. Whereas if you don't filter it, you see the bottom echo isn't nearly as clear <laughs> because of that pile cap. It's still there, but it, it just isn't very clear even with the amplification. But if you have, have a wide open filter in the presence of that big hunk and pile cap. So. so let's go back up to this top one. These are shorter shafts. So this is a kind of a nice classic shaft response. One thing I like about this particular one is the echo at the tip really is a mirror image of the echo of the initial hit. Mm -hmm. And that's what it sort of should be. Because you, know, you hit it, the accelerometer responds, it comes down, it goes up to the top, and whatever it's gonna ring at the top from the initial hit should be similar to the final, to the echo. Okay. It won't always be that way, but you know, sometimes it's kinda nice. And this one is, it's pretty clear. Again, we can filter out some of this data, oh, let's apply that low pass filter. So now it smooths out some of that 
See the hash? Yes. The high frequency stuff. And that probably is not a pile cap, that's just normal noise from tiny changes in diameter, from the, you know, there's also waves echoing side to side in the shaft at high frequencies. There's just a lot of other junk that can be in there that the filtering can uh, smooth out. And so uh, this might be a little too much filtering. So there, now we, we can see that sharp peak. And um, you can see the red fi uh, file is not as clear as the other two. You know, so I, I probably would turn it off. It shows the same echo at the bottom, but it doesn't help the average much. So the average is a little tiny bit clearer with the red one turned off because of that. So, so that's a nice, you know, shallow shaft tip at about 14, 13 and a half feet. So just as an example, uh, this is another really hard example, just to show you, you know, this one, the actual depth was 10.4, but they got a lot of junk going on. This one has a neck here of some sort at about four feet. Mm -hmm. So, you know, plus a potential bottom echo here. And then this is gonna be a, another echo of the, of the neck. You know, <laughs> it just gets really complicated. You know, so this is a hard record to parse out, right. you know, what's going on. Um, this is another test on that one, a little clearer. This one, they actually, it's showing to me a bulb right here. Now, one thing I like to do is not just look at the average because see, uh, yeah, see that's what's going on here is there's a couple of bad records. Let's take out the green one. And actually, I'm gonna leave just the blue, left just the red one. So that's a little clearer. It's similar to what we had, but now it's 16 feet. Mm -hmm. So that's a pretty decent bottom echo. And then actually the, the um, blue one shows a similar depth. It just triggered a little bit earlier. So when you average them together, it, yeah, it gets a little bit mushy. Yeah, if you have both of them on here. See, it it's now looks like a double start because it's got both start right. points. Did that mean that you have a cab on top of it? or like No, it's just the, the triggering of the unit wasn't perfect. Okay. It wasn't really a clean hit on uh, on one of these. Okay. But you can... You can, you can turn them on and off. That's right. Or anything. That's what I like to do. I, always, I almost always start with the looking at all of them together rather than the average just so I can see that, oh, that's what's going on. Okay. Yeah. So I like to uh, start with that, like this one. The green one was clearly a bad hit. It shouldn't have okay. even been accepted. Right. You know, it should just have reject on it. Because and that's one of the points you should be looking at your what you get. Right? Yeah, yeah. So you you should be the ones that accepting data that looks like this. You know, right. where it's just you should be. It always should be flat at the very start. First of all. Yes. Um, yeah. So like like that. that. Yes. Because that's the pre-trigger time, and that's that's should be flat at the start, and. You know, both of these are right on top of each other. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the red and the blue are right on top of each other, so that's high confidence that that's good data. Right. So, you have a couple of things. This is a complicated one as well because you have this shallow parent neck here at about three feet. That's probably a paw cap. Okay. Same with a paw cap, but probably a three or four foot, three and a half foot paw cap. Right. That's really typical. You have a neck or a potential bottom here, but what's interesting is that you also have this big honking bulb right here at 21 feet. So that's probably your bottom sitting in the bedrock. Okay. And the other one is a diameter reduction, maybe at the top of bedrock. That would make sense. Okay. You know, this is a site where I would suspect that what they have is a pop cap, bedrock starting at 15 feet, and then the uh, bottom of shaft in the bedrock at around 21 feet, something like that. You know, so it's it's a complicated one. Yeah. But you know, but it, it's consistent. Each one showed the same record. That's what you're really wanting to see is that they're the same. This one's another complicated one. This has a shallow bulbs. Remember this where it breaks up and it's coming down. It gets yanked up again. Yeah. So this one has a diameter increase about six feet. That's not uncommon. Okay. 
we got some caving, some other stuff. So this is probably the bottom of that diameter increase. And then you have the tip. You know, the bottom is a bulb at about 16 feet. You know, it's breaking up. Um, so they're, they're getting some, this is some weird data. This one's pretty clear. So this is your initial hit. There's your bottom. There's another bottom echo. So it's around 13, 14 feet. Yeah. yeah. And it's got some junk going on, some diameter increases like this. It's probably a bulb. You know, there's there's some stuff going on, but it, it's still pretty clear downward break, downward break, and then it gets kind of lost. You can amplify it up and see things. Usually, I wouldn't use usually more than about one step of amplification, but one step brings it out pretty well. It's an exponential, so the more, the further down you go in time, the more amplification is applied. Okay. So if you go to multiple steps, what it does is it starts making this a really huge. And it just, real echoes get lost in the, in the shuffle. You know, you can still see these echoes, but the amplification isn't helping co these come out. All it's doing is making noise out here. So. In all the filtering, you recommend to start at 2,000? 2000? 2,000 is kind of a nice default, but it really depends on what you're, what I often start with is no, right now we have no filtering at all. Because mm -hmm. it's just turned off. So 2,000, usually above four or 5,000, it's not gonna make a whole lot of difference. You can see as I move it from, say, 8,000 to, 4,000, the record doesn't change much. Because that three pound hammer doesn't generate much energy above 2,000. You know, so you're not gonna change much above 2,000. Okay. If you're using a ball peen hammer, then the filtering, then that, that changes though. So if you use a steel ball peen hammer on a short thing, you might need four or 5,000 hertz okay. as a starting point. You know, it, it, it depends. Because the, the one, when I was using it, I noticed that mine uh, was uh, given, the, the filter was set up at 10,000. Oh, yeah. Well, 10,000 is basically off. Okay. <laughs> you know, so that's, that's here. And you can see there's really no, almost no difference in the waveform between 10,000 and 2,000. But 2,000 to, say, 1500, it smooths out quite a bit. If you go down to 1000, it's really changing quite a bit. Right. You know, 1000 to 2000 is very different compared to the other two. So what you're doing is you're eliminating some of the data, but you're making the echoes clear. You know, you, if all you care about is the bottom echo, right. you can filter a little heavier. But uh, you know, what you're gonna lose are shallow defects, for instance. So you want to be careful not to over filter, at least not initially. Right. What I like to do is start with no filter or minimal filtering just to see if I'm, if there's some shallow thing that I need to be worried about. But if you, uh, you know, if we go back to that last record with the power cap, oh, oh. you know, we, uh, You can see that with no filtering, there's a lot of extra ringing going on yeah. that we'll need to get rid of. And so that's when you look and you see, oh, yep, there's definitely a issue there. I'm not sure why this is. And then you can run it down to filter it. It thinks I didn't accept this, and I did. I have to turn this on here. Let me turn it back on. Now it's getting out. So now I can come in here and see it without the you know, with less pile cap effect. Mm -hmm. So you can start filtering out, but you can't filter out too much or it just goes away. But, um, so that's, that's just a, okay. so yeah, so all of these are, this is no filtering, this is 2000 Hertz. So it doesn't really change much. It's, it gets rid of a little of the noise. Mm -hmm at 2000 without really affecting the record. But the three pound hammer at 2000 hertz is a good starting point, yes. Okay. And then you go down from there. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
So I'm just showing you, this is a nice set of data because it's got a lot of different types of things going on, like a noisy record. So we'll turn off the red one. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. And now you can see kind of the bottom echoes, but they're not super clear. Um, they're the ones that stand out here and here, you know, but again, there's a neck here. So there's some, there's some different things going on. This one is probably echoing as a big old bull, 1.8 feet, 1.8 feet. You know, so this is, there's a shaft with a, it might even be a weird pile cap situation or something, but basically at two feet below the top of the shaft, there's a big diameter increase. Okay. The other thing that happens on these is sometimes on these, these are probably, I think these are like little um, shafts holding up sign poles or something or light poles around town. And they're often really, sloppy with placing the concrete and they'll get blobs of concrete and bolts and things like that so so these are um, let's see what's floyd curl that's that's kind of that's really hard data here that's one i would i would be hard pressed to figure out where the bottom is on that because i think there's a lot of diameter changes going on okay there's there's at least a bowl going on probably here right here and you know at about four feet and there might be kind of a bottom at 20 feet but then there's all this ringing out here but you know it's not due to bad data the data is really clean so it's hard to uh to know what's going on here if we filter it a little we might be able to pull some things up but we don't want to over filter or it just you know it create you can create data that isn't there right you know if you filter too much so you've got to be careful with your filtering. Um, that was Floyd Curl 21, let's try Floyd Curl 21. Yeah, same kind of, not very clear. Floyd Curl, whatever that means, is not, um, they're consistent data, but they're, it's just not a very good shaft to test. <laughs> right. There's, there's gonna be shafts that, they just have so many changes in diameter or junk going on that you just can't see the bottom very clearly. And that that can happen, particularly on these little shafts. Depends on how they're uh, they're done. This is an example where all the records are probably usable, but notice they don't really overlap perfectly at the start. <clears throat> so I would only look at one at a time. So the blue one is really clean, and that's one that was analyzed, and it's ten feet. So it's a really nice ten foot shaft. Being Kadink, Kadink. And that probably is, you know, that 10 foot is pretty typical for light like, poles. Right. And so, yeah, you can use this equipment at 10 feet. I'm guessing, by the way, this was done with a ball peen hammer. Okay. Because this looks, this doesn't look like a three pound hammer. I don't know that, but um, that would be my guess based on how it, how sharp this first echo is and how it damps out here. This looks a lot like our 10 foot log right. with yeah, the ball peen right. hammer. Right. Yeah. See, so then I have that on my list to get one. I would yeah, throw it in the kit. Yeah. I have my guys always have either a geologist pick or a ball peen hammer or both okay. in the kit. Because the other thing you can do with something like a geologist pick is if the surface is a little rough and you don't have a grinder, you can bang on it mm -hmm. and smooth it out. Right. <laughs> and you can also bang on it just to make sure it's concrete that it's not loose or delaminated or punky, mm -hmm. you know, because you don't want to test on something that's punky right. or, or soft. So you really be, you have, and so sometimes it's helpful to use your steel hammer, your ball peen or your- But usually when they fire the column, if they don't do it right, they, you will have like this really soft- Yeah, late, like, good, yes. yeah. So, I guess you have to grind to through it or right. hit it off. Sometimes you hit it and it comes off in chunks. Just yeah. Right. You have to be on good concrete, right. yeah, obviously. And so that's where yeah, having something other than your three pound hammer is helpful because plastic okay. tape hammer isn't very useful for knocking away <laughs> junk. <laughs> yeah, we run into that where we try testing, you know, people are testing and they get weirdly weird results Typically, what happened if you test if you did this test on something that's punky, you're going to get something that looks like it's been heavily filtered. 
it'll look like that. Okay. You know, you won't get any high frequency energy. It'll look like it's got a low pass, because that punky concrete acts like a low pass filter, mechanical filter. You know, it blocks all the high frequency energy. Okay. 